Morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is June 15, 2010. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Hope you are having a lovely day because uh, we've got an awesome night in store for you. A frontal lobe supercharge with Neil Slade tonight. What is that? Is that a electroshock therapy or a lobotomy? Well, no, not quite. Um, but you're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Or you can go to brainradar.com or bookofwands.com. Uh, Neil Slade is a musical composer, concert performer, author, and artist. His music has literally been heard by millions in PBS documentary movie soundtrack for Still and his music for the Kodak United States Traveling Exhibition. He's given hundreds of concerts, radio, and television performances, including appearances at such venues as the United States Air Force Academy and the Gerald Ford. Amphitheater. Um, he worked with um, T.D. He's a brain and behavioral researcher, T.D. Lingo, at Colorado's Dormant Brain Research and Development Laboratory, established by Director Lingo in 1957. And um, of course, his music, Mind Music program, um, he's been teaching for over 30 years. I mean, I don't know what this guy hasn't done, but we're going to attempt to talk about or scratch the surface of it tonight. Um, his books, uh, The Frontal Lobe Supercharge and Have Fun, are easy to use do-it-yourself manuals for turning on untapped areas of each and every person's brain. Uh, the other 90%, so to speak, um, his revolutionary lessons let any person access pre-existing circuits for creativity, intelligence, and and pleasure with methods and exercises proven under scientific investigation. Um, check out the site, uh, bookofwands.com or uh, brainradar.com. Um, but frontal lobe supercharge is basically, um, it outlines the basic principles of how the human brain works and guides readers to sharpen their everyday regular mind and most importantly how to access higher modes of advanced frontal lobe circuits. This may additionally turn on hidden natural brain functions previously interpreted as paranormal Abilities or ESP at the website brainradar.com. There's little exercises, charts, and graphs, so you can find that amygdala. But uh, it's that time, so we are going to be right back with Neil Slade and find out just what that is and how to do it when we return here on Truth Brigade Radio. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at TruthBrigade.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 512 879 Three eight zero five. Our special guest tonight, Neil Slade. We are going to have a frontal lobe supercharge or learn what it is and how to do it. Um, he is the author of six books and I believe 13 audio CDs, Brain Music. It is so good to have you here tonight, Neil. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, wonderful. So good to have you here. I mean, you've just put out so much work out there. But, you know, and it's another one of those topics that we just don't think about. I mean, I think most of us have, well, some of us have brains. And, you know, even less of us know how to use them. And, you know, even of those, we don't know what's in there, what's going on, or much less how to tap into our creativity. So I thank you for all of your work uh, teaching us how to do so. Um, you Very know, welcome. Once you know, it's the most important organ that you have, although some people might not might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a toss-up there with the heart. Yes. Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting point that you bring up, because I, that's a, a very uh, 
common point of of uh, misunderstanding. Um, what we tend to recognize is the heart um, is really those those feelings of uh, gut reaction and those feelings of love and compassion. Now, although you actually have neurons in different parts of your body, really the place that you compute those loving emotions and thoughts is inside the brain. So when people speak of, well, you know, do it with your heart, it's really... Uh, you know, you can have an artificial heart, as it were, a mechanical heart. Or yeah. you can have a heart transplant, right? But you can mm-hmm. still access those feelings of compassion and love because you still, because those are really located in your brain. So it's a, it's a kind of an interesting thing to think about. No, absolutely, and very good point there. Well, Neil, you have just done so much work, I mean, as an artist and musician, composer, ex- and then, of course, all your years teaching and everything. Um, but I'd love to know if you could tell us a little bit about your path and how you got into this whole line of research. I mean, who, I mean, I don't know, do they have classes in uh, clicking your amygdala? Or <laughs> was it something you kind of stumbled on and said, I need to know more about this? Uh, I, I was actually watching a documentary on my, when I was about 28 years old, I was watching a documentary on our local PBS station one night and I was kind of bored and flipping through the channels all of a sudden I saw this very interesting show and it was a bunch of people that were in the wilderness um, in this wilderness brain laboratory and they were talking about paranormal experiences that they were having in ESP and telepathy and I watched that show and at the end of the show they had an interview with the guy who ran this wilderness brain camp laboratory and I wrote to him and his name was TDA Lingo Mm -hmm. and uh, before long uh, I visited him and uh, I ended up for the next 11 years working with him and studying with him and ultimately teaching people how to turn on their the other 90% of their human brain (laughs) as as it's put Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there's a lot of people will say, oh, we use 10% or less of our brain. And then I've actually heard other scientists say, that's impossible. We use it all. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you, this is the way that we've come to look at it. We don't know what the human brain is capable of. And mm-hmm. most scientists would say, well, you know, the human brain is an infinity machine. The, the human brain never says hard drive full. We don't know what the human brain is capable of. It has infinite potential. Just look around you. You see human brains doing all kinds of things, oh, things yeah. you never would imagine, right? Well, mm-hmm. what any percentage of infinity is an infinitely small percentage. Mm-hmm. So to say that we use 10% of our brain... Well, what's 10% of infinity? It's an infinitely small part. To say that we use 1% of our brain is being overly generous. You really can't put it in percentages. But Mm -hmm. the folk saying that we only use 10% of our brain really is saying that the human brain has infinite potential. And that's kind of the folksy way of saying it. So if you look at it, in terms of potential, it is a it is a, a good way of stating the unlimited potential of the brain, and essentially that's what that folk saying is about. So, if you take it in that manner, it's it's a very a very useful way to look at the potential of the brain. Absolutely. Well, you know what's funny is because with modern technology, for instance, and all uh, computers and all that other Star Wars stuff they have going on, but even cell phones, for instance, we went from back in the day where we actually had to remember numbers and dial them, and so, you know, they just kind of became ingrained in our mind to nowadays, well, it's a name. Okay, well, I'm going to call Neil, and we push Neil so we don't remember things like that. But the thing is, is all of this technology came from where? Well, 
someone's brain or a group of brains. So, I mean, we couldn't have think it up or thought it up or built it had we not had that capacity in our own minds. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about um, what you were doing with TDA Lingo in the Brain Research and Development Laboratory. Is this where you developed uh, the, the clicking your amygdala techniques? Well, uh, yes. TD Lingo, what, that was one of the most basic things that he taught people. What people would do would be to come up to the Brain and Nature Camp. And for six weeks that they would camp out and they would study neurology from neurology texts. They would do self-therapy. Um, they would study things like yoga and meditation. And they would take a very holistic look at the human brain and its functions as well as a very holistic look uh, at their own brain and their own life and their own personality. And one of the uh, uh, keystones for this study was to come to an understanding what the basic brain parts were. Uh, and people studied a model of the human brain developed by Dr. Paul McLean, of the, uh, um, who was a very well-respected brain researcher. And he came up with a model of the brain called the triune model of the brain, meaning that the human brain is really three brains in one. Mm -hmm. um, it's a reptilian core surrounded by a layer of mammal brain and then further surrounded by a higher primate brain. And mm -hmm. in the middle of these three layers, right, actually right in the middle of the mammal brain, in between the most advanced layer and the most primitive layer, there's this little master click switch called the amygdala. And what it does is it regulates what where the energy in the brain is is going. Now, when you're threatened, when your survival is threatened, uh, what the amygdala does, and I'm, and I'm generalizing here, but it's like a click switch, so like a light switch. It mm -hmm. clicks back, and it causes an increase in reptile brain function. So if you see a big truck coming at you, you don't analyze it, saying, oh, well, that truck is coming at me about 40 <laughs> miles per hour, and if I stand here in this low, okay, that's, see, that's a higher brain function. You're, mm -hmm. When the truck is coming at you, the amygdala automatically clicks forward into fight or flight, and you run to the curb so mm -hmm. you don't get run over, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're not being threatened, the amygdala can click forward to send energy into any layer of the brain, whether it's an emotional higher mammal part of the brain or all the way forward into the frontal lobes, the most advanced part of your brain. Um, and that will allow you to compute, uh, you know, the, uh, the highest functions of the human brain, creativity, cooperation, intuition, logic. And that's where all the paranormal and all the really interesting kind of uh, uh, things happen at. Mm-hmm. Okay, or the so-called paranormal. <laughs> well, you know, we, at actually, the brain it's lab, we normal used to call, if we knew how to use our brains, well, right? That's, that's right. At the brain lab, we would call stuff like telepathy and precognitive function normal paranormal. Because as you learn to c consciously control this amygdala click switch, you can, you can readily access those what most people call paranormal abilities. But as I, you know, write about in my new book, The Book of Wands, as you learn how to control your brain, you just, you just click on that precognitive stuff, the, the, the telepathy, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, um, psychokinetic types of things. You just click them on and it becomes like routine. So that's, that's why we call them normal paranormal abilities in, in the human brain. Okay, well, well, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the amygdala, of course, is part of the, or is linked to the limbic system. And I guess that's where, um, or that kind of stores and processes emotional memories. Now, state that again, please. 
The amygdala yes. um, is part of the limbic system. Yes, it is. And, and that's, I guess, basically where we store and process emotional memories. Well, you know, emotional memory is a kind of a funny thing because mm -hmm. memory is not in one specific location in the brain. It, and we don't, and scientists really don't know exactly how memory works, but it's, it tends to work by combining bits of data from this part of the brain and from this part of the brain and this part of the brain. We do know that when uh, brain surgeons are doing brain surgery, they can touch parts of this limbic system, this middle layer, the mammal portion of the brain, and it will elicit emotions and emotional memories. So we know that the limbic system is a key component in uh, eliciting uh, emotional memories and, and feelings and, and things like that. And the amygdala, of course, is right in the middle of that uh, limbic system, and it's, it's a big part of that. Okay, and I guess there's two, right? There's one on each side? Yes, the amygdala is really, they're kind of twin tandem uh, uh, um, uh, organs. You've got, if you, if you can visualize about one inch inside each temple, uh, in front and above your ear, you have a right amygdala click switch, and you have a left amygdala cl click switch. And those can either work in tandem or they can work independently. Mm -hmm. um, for example, take somebody like Mozart, okay? Mm -hmm. He was very right-brained, and he was a very musical, and he, he had a very advanced, creative right brain. But he couldn't manage math. He couldn't manage his household financial things. Mm -hmm. So in a sense... Mozart would be an example where his right amygdala was clicked forward, which sent a lot of energy into his advanced right brain frontal lobes. But mm. his, on the left side, his amygdala was clicked backwards, where he, he had no sense of, you know, where dollars went and, and, uh, and what his finances were. So, uh, you know, or you might have somebody like uh, an, uh, an Einstein, for example, he would have his left amygdala clicked forward because he was, he was a great mathematician and a great theoretician, right, and a great mm -hmm. scientist. But yet he, couldn't re he would forget, he would be walking back from, to his house after teaching classes at Princeton, and he would get lost. He <laughs> couldn't remember what street he lived on. Oh, so his right amygdala was clicked backward, but his left amygdala was clicked forward. So both of these amygdalas, at the brain lab, what people would do would experiment, and they would play around, and, you know, one game might be clicking the right amygdala forward and ignoring the left amygdala, and they might reverse that for another game or another experiment like that. So they, wow. they, they, so they I can guess work I'm together okay. or they can work independently. Okay. So I guess I'm okay getting lost on my way home and everywhere I go every day. <laughs> I could could be. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, wow. Hey, Einstein did it. I'm okay. You're okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Now, did... Well, all right, how long have we been aware of how this works and our ability to take part or, or control uh, or clicking the amygdala forward or backward? Uh, how long? I'm not quite sure if... Well, did Mozart or Einstein know about this? Oh, or? well, you know, brain function really, you know, this has been a relatively new field of study, although in the past, Ten years, I mean, brain research has really skyrocketed. Um, one of the earliest people uh, uh, that started learning about the brain was a fellow named Alexandra Luria. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the first people to identify what the frontal lobes did, for example. Um, and, you know, I can't tell you exactly, I mean, I can't tell you. Uh, that would be something for someone to go online and, to, and, and know. But 
he was a Russian scientist, and he would uh, um, uh, perform brain surgery and remove whole portions of the front part of the brain and then wow. note what the resultant behavior was. Um, we really didn't know what specific parts of the brain did until really this last hundred years, and that was from observing what happened to people who had, uh, you know, uh, damaged portions of their brain. And wow, hold that right there, Neil. Will ya? We have a short break, but we will be right back with Neil Slade, BrainRadar.com or BookOfWands.com. Stay tuned, Truth Brigade Radio. All right, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com with our special guest tonight, Neil Slade. We are talking about one of his six books tonight, The Frontal Lobe Supercharge. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 512-879-3800. Zero five, And if you'd like to join us in the text chat, that's over at truthbrigade.com. Uh, Neil, now when this researcher was doing these uh, experiments and, and uh, studies, um, please tell me they weren't live brains that these big portions were removed from. <laughs> Uh-oh, Neil, you there? Am I here? Okay, what's going on? Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, goodness, I think that's, it looks like I'm on. I do not hear Neil. I don't know if it's one of those little Skype gremlins getting in here, and uh, maybe he is here, and I'm just the only one who doesn't know. Um, if you could just let me know in the text chat or something, and uh, we'll find out. Um Goodness. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like lines and everything are all up, but um, we don't have Neil here. So let's see. Um, hmm. All right. Hey, it's live radio. Stuff happens. Uh, and glad you're here. Imperfections and all. Um, <laughs> maybe we need to, like, start clicking our RAM or, or something. <laughs> and that will help. Um, okay. Still nothing back on the uh, chat. So I, I could just be talking to myself here. Um, hmm. But it certainly wouldn't be the first time. Okay, goodness. Um, well, all right. Um, I guess we'll... <laughs> I have no idea. Am I talking to myself here? Okay, all right. It looks like I'm here. Neil is on to on. On to on. All right, well, thanks for the intel. <laughs> Does that mean not on? Okay, all right. Well, as soon as we get the producers back, um, then we will try to get him back on the line. If, um, Gosh, Neil, if you can hear me, I, I don't know what's going on um, in the sound room, so maybe you could just uh, give us a call on the call line, and we'll get you back up right away. Um, hopefully there's not a storm or something crazy. Uh, wiping stuff out in the sound room but stranger things have happened it is live radio so thank you for your patience and for bearing with us uh, the call in number in case you can call me or hear me um, it's 512-879-3805 and we will try to get you um or gosh, hope to get you back up as soon as possible. Um, and I guess we'll get back into those brain experiments. Um, but, you know, the website, you can go to Neil. I'm back. Oh, hey. Wow. Yes, I was just on for some reason after the commercial. It didn't connect to me. So I finally just hung up and figured you would call me back. 
Oh, good. All right. Good. I thought I was talking to myself in a tunnel or something. Okay, excellent. Well, getting back to those uh, brain experiments, were these like live, living, breathing brains? Well, yes. This, in general, this is how pe- this is how medical researchers have come to understand how the human brain works and which part does what. I'm going to switch phones here. I'm on a better phone now. How's that? You sound great. Okay. Yeah, this sounds like Yes, and this is how scientists and, and medical people really learned what physical part of the brain did what. Because during surgery, uh, brain surgery, a patient, typically during brain surgery, a patient remains conscious. And this is how the, the surgeon will test if they're going and removing an area that the patient needs or, or needs to have removed. They'll actually physically touch or probe a specific part within the brain. And then they'll get, uh, they'll get feedback from the patient who's lying there conscious and say, oh, okay, uh, uh, I'm getting this memory. Or they'll see their fingers twitch or, you know, so it's through conscious surgery uh, that they people learn about the brain. Now, fortunately, when you're operating on the brain, there are no nerve receptors in that particular, uh, there are no pain receptors in the brain itself. So wow. if you cut a piece of the brain away, it doesn't hurt. Although, you know, obviously, uh, it's still giving feedback as to what a particular portion of the brain will do. Now, interestingly enough, when you get into the frontal lobes and you poke around in there, it's a big silent area. And so for, for a very long time, it took a long time for researchers and scientists to kind of get a handle on what the frontal lobes do, the most advanced part of your brain. Um, okay. this, this outer layer of the brain is referred to as the primate brain. And that's kind of it computes what distinguishes us from lower mam- mammals. Now, the whole mm-hmm. front third of this primate layer, um, everything from your ears forward, as it were, is called the frontal lobes and the prefrontal cortex. And this part of the brain computes things like uh, creativity, imagination, uh, uh, intuition, concepts of time, uh, logic, um, mm-hmm. And uh, we came to sort of understand what the frontal lobes did first in a historical context by a case of a uh, railroad worker who had a railroad tie. Uh, it, it used to be that they would put, you know, when they built railroads back in the 1800s, they would use explosives to uh, in, in conjunction with tamping down the, the things that held the railroad tracks to the ground. And in one case, one of these things backfired, and a steel rod went into this fellow's, uh, his name was Phineas Gage, and a, and a metal rod went into his brain from the uh, uh, lower part of the, the upper part of the eye orbit in, in his skull. And it went completely through his skull. And what it did is it severed the frontal lobes from the rest of his brain. Wow. So it was like he got an instant frontal lobotomy. Wow. And they started noting how his behavior changed. Mm-hmm. And what happened was that suddenly he, he lost the ability to understand cause and effect. That if he did A plus, you know, 1 plus 2, 3 would happen. He couldn't process things in a timeline, as it were. He didn't understand, uh, uh, you know, he might have a lit cigarette in his mouth and then he'd, he'd pick up another cigarette and he'd light that one, not realizing that he had done something five minutes ago, right? So through this observation of this person, Phineas Gage, people started getting an inkling of what the frontal lobes did. And then along comes somebody like Alexander Luria, the Russian neurosurgeon, and he starts taking out these big parts of the frontal lobes. And what he discovered that it didn't really uh, affect um, 
basic brain function. In other words, you could still eat and you could still talk and have a conversation and you could still ride a bicycle, but it upset these other kinds of frontal lobes uh, abilities, such as mm. understanding concepts of time and imagination. Those things went away when you chopped the frontal lobes. Now, wow. then years later, you get somebody coming along, say, like a TD lingo, who teaches people how to specifically increase frontal lobes processes, and then you discover all these very, very other interesting things that, that, that begin to happen um, and what effect the frontal lobes has on, on things like happiness and pleasure and uh, creativity and so on and so forth. So it's, it's been, you know, over the past hundred years, understanding the brain has been kind of a step-by-step, -step, you know, process where you learn a little bit and then you add on a little more information. And it's kind of this empirical understanding. And, uh, you know, that's how we've learned about the human brain. And that's how humans have learned about their own think motor. But, you know, if you go back to ancient times, they used to think, you know, the Greeks, I believe, thought that the brain was like a radiator, was a cooling mechanism for the brain. So it, it's only been recently, uh, in a historical context, that we've really understood basic brain mechanics. And so when people went to uh, Lingo's brain lab, such as myself and other people, you know, we, we, we get down these basic brain functions for starters, and then we'd go into the more advanced kinds of functions, and then go into the really far out uh, stuff on the cutting edge of, of of brain understanding. Okay, now are there certain things we may be affected by in our daily life that would suppress um, the ability or the activity of the frontal lobe? Oh, absolutely. All you have to do is turn on your TV and you will automatically <laughs> click backward into your reptile brain or start reading the front page of your local newspaper. <laughs> they were culturally conditioned to stay clicked backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's is, this is, you know, uh, uh, politicians. Hitler, for example, he used fear. How, this is how he got an entire nation to mm -hmm. click backwards into the reptile brain, into this self-destructive mode, was he, he knew what would turn on those emotions of fear, right? And okay. this is this is how politicians get whole nations to go to war. Mm -hmm. Is they is they tickle the backside of that amygdala, right? And wow. when you when you're in fear, it's very interesting. When you click into fear, the the effect of that is it shuts down the frontal lobes because your your brain function is kind of like a, a seesaw in a sense. Mm -hmm. Imagine you have a seesaw, okay? And on one end of the seesaw, you have fear, okay? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you have, let's say, Einstein. We have, we have, we have, you know, the frontal lobes compute cooperation and creativity, okay? And logic and intuition, all those really high functions, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the reptile brain computes nothing but fight or flight. Or as the neuroscience joke goes, the reptile brain computes the four F's of human behavior. Feeding, fighting, fleeing, and reproduction. <laughs> that's, all the, that's all the reptilian core does, right? Now, mm -hmm. if, if you're on a seesaw and, and, and all the energy, all the weight is on the reptile side of the brain, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the frontal lobe's end of the seesaw is up in the air. It doesn't have any weight at all, okay? But to get the frontal lobes to work, the reptilian brain has to let go. 
Okay, hold that right there, Neil. Wow, we'll finish this up when we return on the other side with Neil Slade, brainradar.com. Check it out. Be right back. Truth Brigade Radio. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com with our special guest tonight, Neil Slade, author of Frontal Lobe Supercharge, as well as five other titles you can find at his website, neilslade.com or brainradar.com. Um, Neil, um, uh, so basically turning on the boob tube um, or, or uh, uh, the politicians and, and looking at the front page of our paper, that can contribute to why we are basically paralyzed in this, this state of fear. Well, well, here's how you can tell how much of your brain you're using, or, or more accurately, what part of your brain you're using. Okay, mm-hmm. now your, your brain has roughly 100 to 200 billion neurons, and each, those are brain cells. Now, each one of those brain cells is connected to 10,000 to 50,000 other brain cells. So if you add up all the different ways in which your brain can connect to itself, you come up with a number that is equivalent to the number of grains of sand on all the beaches on planet Earth. Mm. So you're the... the so uh. Just the, the, the number of connections inside your brain is is incredible. It's, it's just incredible. Um, and but it's very easy to tell which part of your brain you're using. Whether oh, oh I know what I was going to say. Of those all those connections, okay. Uh, the volume of the brain is distributed such that the mammal brain. And the reptile portions of the brain only make up one sixth of the entire brain mass. So five sixths of the brain is devoted to more advanced processes, the higher wow. primate processes and the frontal lobes, okay? So if you want to use most of your brain, you want to be clicked forward past mm-hmm. the old mammal brain and into the new mammal brain, the primate brain and the frontal lobes, right? Because that's where all your brain power is. You've got five times as much brain to work with if you click into the more advanced parts of your brain, right? Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If you are clicked, If you're clicked into just your reptile brain, for example, you're using only ten, one-tenth of your brain power. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's the problem. People are not using all of their available brain power. Here's the really easy way to tell which part of your brain you're clicked into. Each part of the brain has a, is paired with your emotional feedback thermometer. Okay? When you are clicked into your reptile brain, you feel pain or at the very best, boredom. Mm. It's easy just to remember reptile brain pain. Think about it. When you are clicked in the fight or flight, okay, which is what the reptile brain does, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or just um, a reptile doesn't have any emotions, really, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, a reptile only uh, computes that basic survival, Okay, but when you're clicked into fear, that's a negative emotion. Mm-hmm. If you're just sitting on a rock like a lizard, you know, there's not a whole lot going on. Your tongue is flicking in and out, you know, right? It's not fun. <laughs> Being a reptile is not fun. It's mm-hmm. just... It's, you know, it's, it's the next level up from being a tree, you know? <laughs> a fish, you know? A fish brain, all right? Okay? So if you're clicked into reptile brain, pain or boredom. Now, on the other hand, think about your frontal lobes. When you are, are clicked into cooperation, see, reptile brain is, is just competitive consciousness. It's me, 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 Right? Mm-hmm. The, the best brain lesson I, I had was my first brain lesson at the brain lab. And TD Lingo had me put a steel galvanized bucket over my head. And he starts hitting the side of the bucket. He says, 
repeat after me, 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 me. And, uh, you know, the tears are streaming down my, <laughs> my mm-hmm. cheeks because I'm expecting to learn something about the human brain. And he's got a bucket <laughs> over my head. And he's banging on it. He says, repeat after me, 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 me. And I'm sitting there, me, me, me. And he says, no, louder. Me, 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 louder. Me, me, me. Okay. So then he took off the bucket and he says, that's your reptile brain. Okay, so you kind of you clear on what the reptile brain does, right? Mm-hmm. It's not fun. It ain't fun, All right? But the frontal lobes, when you're clicked into imagination, when you're clicked into cooperation, when you're clicked into that paranormal telepathy, uh, uh, pre-cognitive, precognitive function, clairvoyance, clairaudience. Okay, uh, when you're when you're clicked into creativity, uh, when you then you're having fun, cooperation. I mean, think about the most cooperative thing you do with somebody. Think how much fun that is. Now, now I have to point out. Somebody said to me once, "This is well, you know, when you have sex, isn't that fun?" I said, "No, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> when a reptile has sex." It lasts about three seconds. Even when a higher primate, like a chimpanzee, has sex, it's fun for maybe five seconds, and that's it. It's over. When, 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 when we are really loving somebody, that's frontal lobes cooperation, and that's, when the, that's where the real pleasure lies. And that's all frontal lobes. Well, how's that for a reason to start clicking that amygdala forward? It's that time again, so please stay tuned. Frontal Lobes Supercharged with Neil Slade. BrainRadar.com or BookOfWands.com. We will be right back. Truth Brigade Radio. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight, Truth Brigade, on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. The top of the second hour tonight with Neil Slade of BrainRadar.com. Neil, we have a real short segment here, so if you would, uh, please continue. Sure. Well, I was was talking about the emotional feedback thermometer. How do you know which part of your brain is on or how much your brain is on, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're clicked backward into your reptile brain... At best, you're using 10% of your brain mass, okay? And you're only using 10% of your whole brain power. And so your, your brain gives you negative emotional feedback because reptile brain functions are, are connected with boredom at very best or painful emotions, okay? Now, if you want to increase the amount of pleasure and happiness and satisfaction that you experience, those emotions are elicited when you use your frontal lobes, when you use the other 90% of your brain. And it's, it's nature, Mother Nature is marvelous because Mother Nature is encourages us to use more of our brain. And, and nature does this by rewarding frontal lobes behaviors with pleasure and discouraging this insufficient uh, uh, reptilian fear computation with, it, with pain, right? Use your reptile brain alone, you get pain. If you turn on your frontal lobes, you get pleasure. Mother Nature is brilliant, okay? So all you have to do is take a little survey any time of the day and say, well, how much pain am I experiencing right now? Or how much pleasure? Now, if, if you're experiencing nirvana, well, shut your radio off. You don't have to listen to anything. <laughs> PD lingo has to say about the human brain, right? Because if you're, if you're in nirvana, man, you're using your frontal lobes. But if you're walking down the street and you feel like crap, well, I guarantee you, you have insufficient frontal lobes processes happening. Mm -hmm. Because if you had them happening, you'd feel great, okay? Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, well, how do I click my amygdala forward? How Mm -hmm. do I turn on my frontal lobes? That's, That's the thing to learn to do. For most people... Your amygdala, the switch that regulates what part of your brain is on, 
they don't have any people don't have any conscious control of that it's kind mm-hmm. of like a you know a broken light switch that's flipping on and off in the wind mm-hmm. you're no better than a dog or a cat that can't plan you know five minutes ahead of them you know so the trick is to learn how to control your amygdala click switches consciously you learn you have to learn how to tickle your amygdala and if you can tickle learn how to tickle the front part of your amygdala so it clicks forward and sends all this electrochemical activity to increase in the front lobes you got it made in the shade mm-hmm. and and the thing is it's 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 very uh you know, you just don't learn how to, when you learn how to click your amygdala forward, when you learn how to tickle your amygdala forward, you just don't get good, better at one thing. You get better at everything because the frontal lobes help you do everything. It helps you in your relationships. It helps you to find the kind of job that you want to do. Heck, if you're out of a job right now and you're unemployed, you you, you want to learn how to click your amygdala forward because your frontal lobes will tell you where you can get a job, how you can get a job, and how to stay employed. Mm, I might even discover a hidden talent in there. It's that time again, but we will be right back with a much longer segment, Neil Slade on Truth Brigade Radio. All right, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at truthbrigade.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 512-879-3805. Our special guest tonight is Neil Slade. Uh, We are talking about one of his half a dozen books, Frontal Lobe Supercharge, where we are going to learn how to turn on those untapped areas of our mind, Uh, hopefully that other 90% we've been ignoring. BrainRadar.com is the website, or BookOfWands.com for his latest book. It's 1,111 pages. Pages. <laughs> that's a few books there. Uh, so bookofwands.com is that. And that's basically everything, uh, all, all of your brain research and, and how-to in your latest book, right, Neil? Well, well, the Book of Wands is written as a novel. And the main protagonist is a fellow named Niles Abercrombie, who was started out as a public, was a public school music teacher dropout. And it's kind of it's kind of really me, you know. <laughs> but I wrote it in a very colorful novel type style. Um, the first 200 pages, for example, goes into great detail about my experiences at the Dormant Brain Research and Development Laboratory, and this is where I studied and worked with TD Lingo for 11 years. And then the other. Uh, uh, 900 pages of the book deals with uh, how I spent the the 20 years that followed with my own students and teaching them how to access these magical frontal lobes and how to use the frontal lobes in conjunction with unusual tools. Now, in in the vernacular, uh, we we call unusual tools wands you know we've all we're all familiar with the harry potter series and lord of the rings and in these uh fictional books the the heroes and sometimes even the villains of these books uh use things like staves and wands and they use tools to focus their intent and their personal energy Well, the thing is, in real life, you have intent, you have dreams, you have personal energy, and as a human being on this planet, you utilize tools, things like pens, pencils, cameras, screwdrivers, crowbars, brooms, canes, umbrellas. There's a whole list of tools that you use. And the magic happens is when you combine your tool 
with your frontal lobes. And when you learn how to do that, then you experience a world that is more magical than you have seen in the Harry Potter movies. It is more magical than you have read about in The Lord of the Rings. And those kinds of fantastic adventures become your reality when you combine your tool with your brain power. And so that's what the Book of Wands is about. Now, uh, a new book has just come out this very evening, and it's called 100 Reasons to Paint. And let me tell you a little bit about that book and that author. Yes, now, I, I published that book. It was written by a former bankruptcy lawyer. This was a woman who uh, came to the United States uh, from China, a woman that went, that got her doctorate in the philosophy and history of science on a scholarship. She then went and became a, that wasn't enough. When she got her doctorate, she decided, well, I think I'll become a lawyer and make some real money. <laughs> so she went to law school, and she graduated at the top of her class. So here was a woman with a Ph.D. in uh, history and philosophy of science, and then a, a lawyer who was making scads of money, but it wasn't, satis it wasn't satisfying to her. Imagine that. You would think, you know, with, with those kinds of things. What she discovered that her real love was painting. Mm -hmm. And so... So she didn't have this love while she was in law school and, and doing her thing, making all that money? No, actually what happened was she, it started out, she would kind of doodle in class. Mm -hmm. in, 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 and she would doodle pictures of the professors and the students. And then she, she discovered that she really liked doing it, and then she started painting. And she fell in love with painting, right? Mm -hmm. Well... What she finally did a year, year and a half ago is she gave up her law practice and she moved to Denver and she's now a painter full time and she is the happiest person you will ever meet in your life and I will attest to that. Wow. She is well, phenomenally creative. Beautiful work here, and it's JuliaPainting.com. If you want to go see with your own eyes, yes. It's and phenomenal. actually, what I did is I built a little web page for her. And if you go to my brain site, there's a link that goes to Julia uh, to her her book page, and people can actually download a 40 page demo of of the book. And the book is a hundred color plates of her paintings and her explaining how she used her, how she uses her brain for this creative process. In other words, she learned how to click her amygdala forward. Okay? Because we corresponded for, for many, many years. So she learned she learned what the frontal lobes did, and when she learned what the amygdala did, and she learned all those brain basics, and then she learned how to keep her amygdala clicked forward, and she went from a job she hated to a job that she loves, that, that, she, wow. that she does full time. And so I encourage people to click on, you can go to juliapainting.com, or you can go to my website and just take the link from, and go look at her paintings. They'll blow okay. you away. They'll blow you away and, and download the demo book that, that you can download for free on, on that link. And uh, Neil, can you walk me through this? I'm looking at, I don't see it on her site right now. Oh, oh okay, yes. You, you need to, okay, go to brainradar.com. Uh-huh. Are you there? I am. And then just go a little bit down the page and you'll say, Julia Lou, new, new brain book, 100 Reasons to Paint. You might have to refresh your browser. Do you see that? Yeah, I'm thinking I might maybe like the cookies or something because I'm I'm going to go to my computer and help you and maybe any listener. Go to, okay, you're on my, refresh your browser. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
So you're looking at uh, the, that weird painting on my site, right? Uh, well, it's beautiful, but yes. if you want to call okay. it weird, go then for just it. Go, then it says the Book of Wands <laughs> is here. Uh-huh. So about two inches below that, it says New Brain Book. Oh, hey, here it is. Now, All click, right. on, click on that <laughs> link, and then that will take you to the, uh, it says Julia Liu, 100 Reasons to Paint, and it says download the free chapter demo. And there's a couple of her paintings right there on that page. Mm -hmm. But if you click on download the free 10 chapter, and it's 100 chapters, this book. Wow. That will, if you click on that, did you click on that? Mm -hmm. And then that should open. A lot of clicking. <laughs> well, a little bit, you know, and there's a lot. <laughs> you know, people, if people go to my website, they could spend uh, two weeks. It would take them about two weeks to see all of the pages if they were to sit in front of their computer six hours a day. Mm -hmm. I have 2,000 files on my website. Wow. 2,000. That is certainly a wealth of information. So, so have you got Julia's book open there? I do. And the paintings are just, they're astonishing. So, you know, clicking your amygdala forward opens up all the creativity in your brain. It opens up all the problem. It, is, it opens up the advanced problem solving in your brain. You know that, do you, you, know, uh, do you, do you see that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats? Oh, I haven't seen it yet, but I totally understand uh, the premise. Well, you know, in the trailer for that film, George Clooney busts clouds. Do you, you know where he looks up mm -hmm. at a cloud in the sky and he makes it go away? Mm -hmm. Well, ten years ago, I did an experiment on Art Bell's Coast to Coast show. And this was during the terrible droughts that Florida was experiencing in 1997. And there were wildfires raging all over northeastern Florida. So Art Bell invited me. You know, I, I, I talked to Art, and I said, you know, I, I can make clouds disappear in the sky. I can pick out a cloud in a bank of clouds, and I can focus my brain, focus energy on that cloud, and make one specific cloud go away without affecting the other clouds. And he said, come on. And I said, yeah. And so I did it in my backyard, and I made a film. I said, and I didn't have to practice. I just took my camera, and I pointed it up at the sky at this big, dense, at a bunch of clouds. And I said, okay, I'm going to pick that one right there in the middle and make that one go away. So I filmed it, and I sent him the tape, and he had me on his show. So Florida was having raging fires in northeastern Florida, and there was no rain predicted. It was dry as a bone. And I said to Art, tell you what, Art, you've got a big audience. You've got at least a million people listening. What if a million people click their amygdala forward, tickle their amygdala, and we focused our intent and brain energy on northeastern Florida, and we made it clouds appear? Mm -hmm. And we would make it rain. And I had the, so I taught the audience how to tickle the front part of their amygdala. And mm -hmm. then once they were clicked into their frontal lobes, I had everyone visualize rain over the northeastern segment of Florida. And what I did is I, I was documenting satellite imagery of Florida at that time. And there were no clouds anywhere near that portion of the state. Well, within an hour, clouds began forming over that part of the state. And I said on the radio, I said, making rain appear is not so easy. It might take a couple of days. But we see 10 inches of rain falling on that part of the state. And I said 10 inches because the, uh, the weathermen we're saying, well, you know, if rain was to put out the fires, we'd need at least 10 inches of rain, right? Mm -hmm. and no rain was predicted. But when I was on our show, I said, okay, we are going to visualize with our frontal lobes, advanced imagination and visualization, we're going to visualize 10 inches of rain. And within three days, it began to rain, and it didn't stop until they got 10 inches of rain in Florida. And if you go... If you go to my website and there's a link that says Cloudbus, they're a great weather experiment. 
Mm-hmm. You'll see the satellite photos, and you'll see the video of me busting a cloud in my backyard. And anyway, so that's what George Clooney was referring to in that movie, this ability to affect the weather and to affect the physical environment with brain power. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. Imagine if, if the whole world could focus in on the Gulf right now with their frontal lobes energy, we might be able to plug that horrible reptilian dinosaur hole that's in the ground there. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's, mm-hmm. that is reptile brain personified. Pe- oh, yeah. Greedy people trying to make money so they cut corners on doing the job right. Mm-hmm. Reptile brain people who, instead of riding their bicycle to work, instead of using walking, instead of using public transportation, how many times do we go on the road and see hundreds of cars with one person behind the wheel? That whole thing is all that is, it's, you know, even the oil itself is mm-hmm. the result of reptiles who died millions of years ago and wow. and who became through uh, uh geological processes the, the 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 dinosaurs were transformed into oil that's what oil is it's wow. it, it's reptilian anyway any way and always that you look at it. And, and the, here we have the reptilians drilling for it again, when really we could use clean, renewable, uh, free energy like uh, water, wind, and the sun. It is <laughs> it's there free for the taking. Let me tell you something. T.D. Lingo lived on 250 acres of wilderness for 35 years without electricity. And mm-hmm. he lived a fantastic full life. Isn't that how we all lived uh, just a century ago or, or less even? <laughs> you know, well, yeah, well, the, the days of coal burning were not so great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but the days of renewable energy are ahead of us. So, you know, let's click forward. I heard a very interesting thing on the radio. It was Tom Hartman's show. And it was a very creative frontal lobes idea and he says why don't why doesn't somebody make a machine that takes the oil out of the seawater extracts the oil out of the seawater and then uses that extracted oil to run the machine mm-hmm. that then goes and cleans up more of the oil isn't that a genius idea? <laughs> It'd be mm-hmm. like a self-generating, you know, one of those robotic vacuum cleaners that kind of bumps into the walls and it finds, you know, it just runs itself. A mm-hmm. machine that cleans the water and then, you know, takes the, the, the garbage out of the water and then uses that as fuel to run the machine. That's a frontal lobes idea. See? Yeah. So that's this the, is an... That's the direction we need to move in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to uh, let everyone know, they, they posted your video, of the cloud video, in the text chat over at truthbrigade.com, but you also have a YouTube account. You can go to youtube.com slash Neil Slade, that's N-E-I-L-S-L-A-D-E, but it's that time again, so we will be right back. Uh, while we're on break, check out Brain Radar. Com, Neil Slade on Truth Brigade Radio. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Uh, I see we have a couple callers on the line, uh, but Neil, let's, uh, cause we're kind of running out of time here already. Right. We didn't even get down to the meat and potatoes, the how-tos. And uh, thank you for holding, and we will take your call right after this, but I just want to make sure we go through this. Um, sure. Well, you know what? Part of learning how to click the amygdala forward is learning some brain basics. And all your listeners have been learning that without even trying by listening to the show because we talked about the frontal lobes, 
We talked about the reptile brain. We talked about the emotions of the of the mammal brain and differences. So that's step one. So you got that, okay? <laughs> the first thing you have to do is be able to identify which part of your brain is on. So we know reptile brain equals pain. Frontal lobes equal pleasure. We know where the amygdala is. It's one inch inside each temple, about one inch inside each temple, midway in the brain, okay? So here's what you do. Now, this is, this is just kind of like a little starter, just to kind of get started. What, if people really want to learn how to click the amygdala forward and all the details and intricacies, go to brainradar.com and just start reading all the 2,000 pages of free information there. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's music. You can go to YouTube slash Neil Slade and watch some brain videos. So there's all kinds of stuff that you can do on the website and on the YouTube to, you know, make yourself familiar with what the brain does and what the amygdala does. So here's what I'm going to teach your listeners to do. It's very simple. Okay? Just close your eyes as you're listening to this show. Okay? And imagine that you can see inside your brain. And on the left side, about one inch inside from their left temple, there's a golden almond, a little almond, and it's about the size of your tip of your thumb. And that's your left amygdala. Now, on the right hemisphere, on the right side of your brain, it's also got a golden almond, one inch inside your right temple. So there sit your two little golden almond amygdala switches. Now, that almond is connected to the center of your brain and the top of your spinal cord where your reptile brain is. But that almond is also connected to the most advanced part of your brain that sits right behind your forehead. That's your frontal lobes. So the way we're going to get energy to move forward from that primitive base part of your brain is we're going to take a feather and we're just going to hold that feather in our imagination in front of our head and look at that feather and maybe with your left hand or with your right hand hold the feather and then with the other hand stroke the feather from the bottom to the tip and you can feel how feathery that feather feels and look at the color of that feather is it white or is it rainbow colored maybe it's a blue peacock feather whatever you want to imagine the color of it now what I want you to do is take the tip of that feather and come in through the front of your head as if you could just go right through the front and I want you to hold the tip of that feather to the front part of that little golden almond and just go tickle 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 on the left side and then take the tip of the feather and go to the front of your right golden almond amygdala button and tickle your right amygdala tickle 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 from the front and just by doing that, you've clicked your amygdala forward. Now, okay, some so of you, you may tickling it from the front from as if the, the feather was like by our eyes. Yes, you can come in from the front in through the, your forehead, right, and just touch the tip of the feather and just tickle, tickle that almond from the front. Tickle, 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 on one side, and then go to the other side. Tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> and that's it. That's the easiest way that you can think of. That's the easiest method that that we've come up with in 45 years of brain research to click that amygdala forward. Now, some people, when I tell the two, they just burst out laughing. They think it's so funny. And it's perfect because mm. laughter is computed in the frontal lobes. Hmm. Now, if you can imagine, did, were you able to imagine that almond and that feather? Mm hmm You were in your frontal lobes, because that's where imagination is computed. Okay. You see? Absolutely. Just that mere imagining 
the feather and the almond clicks you out of reptile brain because reptiles can't imagine anything. All the reptile brain can do is fight or flight, the four Fs of human behavior, right? So if you can imagine that you've got a feather and you're tickling your brain, you've clicked forward. And that's where it all starts, right there. Uh-huh. And so when you're taking, let's say you're a student and you're in college and, you're try, and you want to pass, you want to study for an exam, the first thing you do when you sit down to study is you click your amygdala forward. And tickling your amygdala with your imagination is one of infinite methods of clicking your amygdala forward. If you go to the website, you'll see dozens more ways to click your amygdala forward. If you're going to try to pass your driver's test, the first thing you do is you tickle your amygdala to get out of your reptile brain and into your frontal lobes where the creativity is, where the intuition is, where the imagination is, where the cooperation is, where the logic is. you got to click forward into Cecil, creativity, imagination, cooperation, intuition, logic. Those are frontal, that's frontal lobe's power. Cecil, you got to tickle your amygdala forward. If you're looking for a job, first you got to click your amygdala forward and get out of that fear and into cooperative creativity. If you're trying to make up with your spouse or your mate, the first thing you got to do is click out a fight or flight. You got to know what part of your brain you're using, and you got to click into the most advanced part of your brain. It's so simple, and all it takes is is learning how to get that amygdala to click forward, and to keep clicking it and keep tickling it. Let me ask you this: If you're more uh, left brain or right brained, yeah. would you want to focus or imagine uh, tickling the opposite side to kind of stimulate the? If you can't balance your checkbook, or um, <laughs> would you want to start tickling the left side more, or do you want to do them equally? Oh, I know where you're coming from. I would say you're probably on the mark there. You should go to where your deficits lie to get your brain balanced out. You know, okay. but ultimately, what you learn is that, and you know, one of the chapters in Julia's book is balance your brain. It's, and it's mm-hmm. actually the chapter in one of my books too. Is balance your brain. It's no good to be right brain heavy and left brain weak, or the opposite. You know, we have two legs, we have two arms. There's a reason for it. It's because you switch from one to the other, right? And you want to stay balanced so when you're clicking yeah go you know you you might be more comfortable starting out clicking the side that you think you are brain dominant Mm -hmm. and and people don't know what right brain left brain is let me explain it quick right brain is more spatial it's more artistic it's nonverbal it's musical it's artistic left brain is linear logical math language Okay, so you prob- most people probably have a pretty good sense of which side they're more dominant in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, okay. make a game out of it and one day click your right amygdala forward and see what happens. And then another day click your left amygdala forward, you know, and, and keep notes. Experiment. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this. How much time do we want to spend on doing this, and how much time till we uh, start experiencing results? You start experiencing results immediately. Immediately. If, it puts, if tickling your amygdala puts a smile on your face, it's, that's an immediate result. Okay. What, what I encourage people to do is to take a, keep a written journal. Once they learn their brain, brain basics, you know, write it down. You know, if you've got a computer, make a little folder that says, My Brain, and, it, and put the day's date. And, and write, you know, it only takes you the one minute. Mm-hmm. Write down your impressions of what your brain was doing today. And do that every okay. day. And, All right. And, you know, kind of keep notes. Um, the results start as soon as you do. And they keep up as soon as you do. There's no, okay. there's no end to this. You can, you know, the sky is the limit as far as brain power goes. 
Okay, Neil, we have a couple callers on the line, and I'm sorry for keeping you holding, but I wanted to make sure we went through that, so thanks so much. It looks like our first caller tonight is the lovely Julia, who's also an artist and painter. Welcome to the show. Hi, Christy. How are you doing tonight? Well, I can tell you're not Julia Lu because you don't have that Chinese accent. <laughs> that lovable, cute Chinese accent. <laughs> I've got a southern accent and a northern accent. Oh, well, that's just as good. <laughs> Is that northern and southern China? Or? <laughs> <laughs> northern and southern uh, America. Well, nice <laughs> to talk right to you, Julia. Nice talking to you, too. Um, I came across your sign. I was looking at it and reading a lot of the pages. And I looked, watched the videos and the Lingo, TD Lingo videos. Also. Oh, did you see the documentary on YouTube? There's a 30 uh, minute. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah there's yeah. a there's a new 30 minute documentary on TD Lingo in the Brain Lab that I just posted on YouTube last month. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the one that I saw. Well, you Actually, know, go to there's a section on the six. there's a section on the website that says. Uh, Dorman Brain Research Laboratory, and go there and just kind of explore there, and you'll see the TD Lingo. There's three frames, and there's t three ten-minute sections of that film. That's very, very interesting. And he was oh, quite, are those ones he was a, black and white. What are those the ones in black and white? Yes, they were. Yes. Yeah, I watched all those. Oh yes, he was quite a character. One of the most interesting. Four was together. Yes. <laughs> so you're, you're. Um, I will have. Go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering what question you may have. Well, I tried uh, using some of the. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of feedback I'm getting. Yeah. Turn off your too. your computer or your radio. I that's off, and I turn the speakers off. Okay. Well, I can hear you perfectly fine. So go ahead. Okay. Um, I tried the methods that you had, and the result that I got was probably about 20 minutes into it. I was listening to an interview you were giving uh, with somebody or a couple of women, uh -huh. and we were talking about this. So I lay down on the couch, and I tried to visualize what it was you were talking about. And uh, as far as tickling the amygdala, with a feather, and then I also tried the laser. And I think I was focusing on my, the left side. Well, I got a charge. It was an electrical charge from the left side that went, started like in the ear area on the left side, and it went over and up and across the top and to the right side. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like it was trying to turn over. It was like an engine. Yeah. Like it was trying to start something and but it wouldn't actually start sure it wouldn't actually finish turning over but that happened about a dozen times oh that's fantastic well i think it's you know what you've got is it sounds like you've got parts of your brain which is kind of like a car that hasn't been running for a long time right mm -hmm. so for example i've got a little old sports car in the back and if i don't if I don't start it up, you know, once every couple of weeks, yeah, it's really hard to get going. Absolutely. Uh, hold that right there, though. It's that time again. My goodness. We will be right back with Neil Slade. BrainRadar.com is the website. Truth Brigade Radio. All right. Welcome back. Wow. Truth Brigade time capsule tonight. That certainly went quick. My goodness. Neil Slade, our special guest tonight. Frontal lobe supercharge, which you can find at Brain Radio. Radar.com. Um, we have, goodness, less than six minutes left, and Julia's still on the line. Oh, good. So I'd love for you to finish up, and then we have one more caller, so we're going to try to get you both in here. Um, so please continue, Neil. Well, what I was going to say, I, it sounds like that's a fantastic start that she's got, that she would lie down and feel the electricity passing across her brain and that she got real sensation. 
Now, you know, that's just the start. So what I would suggest to her is just go to the website and just start reading and enjoying the music and the video and learn and let it cook in your brain. You know, when you put a cake into the oven, you don't pull it out 30 seconds later or a minute later and expect the cake to be done, right? When you're learning brain self-control, it's the same thing. You take one step. You learn where your amygdala is. And then you take the second step. You feel the electricity going through your brain. And then the third step is you start to learn how to direct that electricity where you want it. And then the next step is then you apply that brain power to whatever situation or problems that you may have in life or into directing that brain power into improving a segment of uh, of your existence and so on and so forth. So, Julia, you got you got a great start. Just don't quit okay. now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited mm-hmm. about that. I wasn't expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but and I didn't know how long it was supposed to take. Music is a really good thing. In the frontal lobe supercharge, I talk about a lot of different things that you can use to accelerate this progression of brain growth. Music is a wonderful thing to use. Art, this is why Julia's book, for example, is a really great thing, because you look at a piece of art, and it will click your amygdala forward as through your occipitals and through your recognition of colors and patterns. And when you listen to good music that you like, it comes in through your auditory uh, senses in your brain. When you read good literature, there's a lot of ways to get your brain out of reverse gear and in the first and then second and then third and fifth gear and overdrive. So, you know, just explore the brain site and you'll pick up lots of tips. Lovely. I'm a right brain functioning person and a left brain functioning person. I'll do (laughs) art and creative creativity, lots of drawings, pencil drawings, but then I also am a draftsman, so I work with a lot of math and um, uh, designs, but it's it's all math. Yes. That's a good combination. I love Excellent. all of it. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you Thanks much. so much for calling yeah. in and sharing that with us tonight. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Wow. Less than two minutes left and one more caller. I think we can do it. Uh, welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello. Hey. So, yeah, no, like I was saying, I, I've been trying to practice this, but I feel it works better when I use this uh, Cobalt 60 powder. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic when I uh, use it. <laughs> and, uh, and and I've noticed when whenever I'm stroking my third eye, I, I'm uh, suffering from premature enlightenment. So uh, is there a... Uh... <laughs> uh, and, and, and to a- answer everyone's question... China is for uh, the Chinese people. Yes, it is. But anyway, <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone uh, for listening to True Brigade Radio, and uh, be sure to uh, tip your waitress after you leave. God bless. Stay black. Bye. I could swear that was Bobby Spaghetti, one of the characters from the Book of Wands. I could be wrong, but I'd be willing to take a bet on that. Bobby was a... Uh, to, to get us into our frontal lobe and laugh and smile and <laughs> yes, that that guy had his creativity clicked on. I'll tell you, that was pretty funny. I loved it. Oh goodness! All right, wow. I'm I'm glad we had time for that. Thanks, Louie. Okay, we just have a minute left though, and, and I wanted to talk about all. I'm gosh. Well, I uh, I wanted to talk about your books tonight, and of course your music and how we can use that. But if you could just kind of briefly um, let us know about your other books, the Cosmic Conversation. Sure. How- Hey, I, what I would just tell people is, go, listen, brainradar.com. It's like a gigantic candy store for your brain. You can go there every day for a month and find something new. There's music. I have six, I think six or seven, six books out. There's previews of the book. There's video. 
go and explore brainradar.com. I have online books that you can download instant online. Uh, there's, uh, there's instant online music that you can get. You get printed stuff. You can get DVDs. Go have a brain blast. I love it. You have been such a blast, Neil. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was my pleasure. Oh, pleasure's all mine. I'm loving that uh, have fun uh, Um, (laughs) anti-rules. Definitely sounds like a good book. Once again, Neil Slade, BrainRadar.com. You can check out all of his books and all of his lovely music. I'm so sorry we didn't have time to share any with you tonight, but we're going to have to do this again. Thank you, Neil, for sharing your time and wisdom with us. Thank you all for being here tonight. Abundant blessings and love to all. We will see you tomorrow night. Truth Brigade Radio. Yeah.